Welcome to the Aviation Insurance Podcast, the podcast that helps aircraft owners and aviation businesses learn and understand the complex world of aviation insurance and risk management. From the basic principles of aviation insurance to risk management techniques and updates on the aviation insurance market, the Aviation Insurance Podcast is your guide to traverse the world of aviation insurance. Now, here's your host, Tim Bonnell. Well, welcome to the Aviation Insurance Podcast, the podcast where we talk about fundamental issues of aviation insurance. And today, I want to talk about an issue related to aircraft operations, but it's the non-owned aircraft exposures that I want to talk about. So, you know, people have owned aircraft or leased aircraft insurance policies for aircraft they directly operate and are financially or contractually obligated to insure. But there are plenty of situations where people operate non-owned aircraft where they need to make sure that they are covered. And so that is both for physical damage and for uh, liability, third-party coverages. So uh, there are a number of reasons that people would need non-owned aircraft. Uh, number one is if there's a covered loss to their aircraft, then uh, they will be flying something else as a replacement. And there's actually a specific provision in many aircraft policies. Again, read your policies. Uh, what I'm talking about today is an overview and not an absolute in all policies, but will often allow for coverage to apply to that temporary replacement aircraft uh, so long as it's in that same category class, you know, single engine airplane, four seats, uh, and the coverage usually is up to the same uh, insured value and liability limit. So uh, when you're using a temporary replacement aircraft, you want to make sure you understand that um, the limit and the value needed for that replacement and that your policy has adequate coverage for it. So there's a temporary replacement option. Then we just have aircraft owners using other aircraft. Uh, I got a buddy's plane. I want to fly it. Um, uh, I want to borrow someone's plane because mine's in the shop, whatever that is, uh, not as a result of a covered loss. And so a lot of times aircraft owners will fly someone else's aircraft. And and so there's a number of things, a number of ways to cover that particular uh, scenario. And the first is that that aircraft owner may actually have some non-owned coverage on their aircraft insurance policy. They may. It's important to check and verify. Many aircraft insurance policies have non-owned coverage. However, many of them also state that if the named insured, so the, the, the name listed on the declarations page of the policy, is an individual or an individual and a spouse, that non-owned coverage for physical damage and liability applies. Uh, now, that said, a lot of Aircraft are owned by corporations, uh, businesses, or LLCs. And so when that's the case, that non-owned coverage doesn't apply, and separate non-owned coverage would have to be purchased, or that policy would need to be endorsed to make sure that an aircraft owned by an LLC would extend the non-owned owners, uh, non-owned coverages to uh, to the aircraft owner, uh, those pilots that would be operating non-owned aircraft. So that's a big thing to watch for on certain non-aircraft uh, policies where you hope to have non-owned coverage through your aircraft policy. Does it cover uh, the named insured, even if it's an LLC or a corporation? That's an important thing to keep in mind. Again, just like with temporary replacement aircraft, the aircraft policy will typically extend the same value up to the same value and limits, not always, but typically uh, if you have $100,000 of physical damage and a million dollars of liability, that's typically the amount of non-owned coverage you will see on that aircraft policy if everything applies. Uh, again, it would apply to typically uh, a specific similar type aircraft. So if it's a single engine aircraft, it typically will be single engine, same number of seats, uh, same type of power plant. So you're not going to cover a non-owned exposure for a jet on a Cessna 172 insurance policy. So you got an owner's policy to cover an aircraft owner flying someone else's aircraft. Those are the provisions. You got to make sure the ownership uh, uh, provision isn't in the policy if you are an owned by a corporation or LLC. And again, same type of aircraft, same limits and values typically apply. But there again, uh, you got to make sure. Then there are straightforward non-owned aircraft hole in liability policies just for people who don't own an aircraft already. Uh, a student pilot renting an aircraft, maybe a CFI giving instruction in other aircraft. Um, there are personal uh, non-owned home liability policies offered by several carriers. Uh, and that basically 
offers various levels of physical damage and liability coverage for an individual renter or CFI. And again, you need to be clear on on what that is. And they're very clear on what type of aircraft they they do um, apply to. In some cases, people flying multi-engine pistons or uh, in some cases, helicopters may be able to obtain one of these personal or CFI non-owned aircraft policies. And you, again, have usually a menu of physical damage and or non-owned coverages that you are willing to select. Oftentimes, a flight school fixed-based operator will require their renters to carry one of these personal non-owned insurance policies. So you're a pilot using a renting aircraft and you don't already own an aircraft, these personal uh, CFI non-owned, uh, personal or CFI non-owned policies, you typically address that. And then they're just general non-owned policies for either individuals or corporations that uh, operate other people's aircraft or utilize other people's aircraft. Maybe you ha- this company has employees who either rent or use their own aircraft for company travel. That is a non-owned exposure for the company. A lot of times that employee's policy is not going to be uh, providing adequate limits for the company or the corporation. So that's a great reason for the company to have non-owned aircraft. Perhaps you're chartering aircraft. You want to make sure your company is protected with adequate limits. Um, hiring power line, pipeline patrol companies. All kinds of reasons where a company utilizes aircraft in their business that they don't own. A non-owned policy is a great way to protect that business given that exposure. The bigger the company, the more likely an attorney is going to go after that company should something go wrong. So a non-owned policy is applicable uh, for many, many um, companies that have nothing to do with aviation on a normal basis because they are utilizing aircraft indirectly uh, through employees, third-party vendors, and so on. So non-owned aircraft home liability, they they do have policy restrictions. You are carrying a limit for physical damage and or liability. Liability typically exists. Uh, Sometimes physical damage is optional. They do have policy provisions you want to make sure you ensure. Uh, Again, there's just a number of situations where non-owned aircraft come into play. If you are operating someone else's aircraft, you want to make sure that you don't invalidate their policy. You want to make sure you either meet the terms of their pilot requirements, their open pilot warranty, or if not, that you are approved as a named pilot. And uh, so even though you may have some coverage, their, their coverage is primary. By having a pilot who does not meet their pilot requirements or isn't approved to fly that aircraft, you could invalidate their coverage, which would be bad. Uh, non-owned coverage is typically excess over the primary owner's policy, um, and it is used for a, a number of, of reasons, again, and is a great coverage to have for any pilot, any business uh, operating aircraft they don't own. Non-owned aircraft, physical damage, and liability available on aircraft owner's policies, individual, personal, and CFI non-owned, and company and larger, just uh, all-purpose Uh, non-owned policies created to address the exposures that they're hoping to ensure. So that's non-owned aircraft at a very high level. And uh, it's all for this episode. Join us again next time as we continue navigating the waypoints in aviation insurance. Until then, enjoy clear skies and unlimited visibility. Thanks for listening to the Aviation Insurance Podcast. If you found this episode of value, please share it with someone who would benefit from this information. Don't forget to subscribe in your podcast player so you don't miss any new episodes and to help our show have more impact. This episode is brought to you by Eris Insurance Solutions, your flight plan for navigating the turbulence of aviation insurance. For more information, visit erisinsurance.com. That is www.aerisinsurance.com. Disclaimer. These episodes are for educational purposes only, and due to the changing regulatory and legal nature of the business, some information may change over time. Having a well-educated and experienced aviation insurance broker on your team is an absolute requirement to success in business and for managing your aircraft and aviation business risks.